Thanks, Anna. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hello. So nice to be here. Feels like I'm uh, really getting to know you here. This is, I can see the regular Thursday night crowd. Yeah. Welcome. If there's any guests, I don't know. Are there any guests? You're, you're so welcome that you're we're glad you're here. There's no guests? Okay. Well, if there was, they'd be welcome. <laughs> Yeah, like Anna said, you know, you want to, don't want to be looking at all the stuff that's going on in the world. I think the worst thing that's going on right now is Tim Hortons is actually thinking of canceling Roll Up the Rim. Rolling Up the Rim is not canceled. Oh, praise God, it was fake news. Oh. So we're still doing Roll Up the Rims. That's great, because, you know, this, you can, it's good for a free coffee once in a while, right? <laughs> oh, rewards card. Okay. All right. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, beautiful presence of God. Love it. Love worshiping with you guys. Uh, you know, we're the body of Christ together, right? Amen? And it's, it's so awesome. When we worship together, something happens. And uh, definitely true what Anna said. Anna, you just, everything you were saying tonight, man, bang. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, yeah, it was so good. You should be preaching. Do you preach? Sometimes? No? Mm hmm Yeah. Just even coming in and just starting to worship, just could sense the anointing and uh, so thankful for Pastor Paul and Debbie, and uh, glad that they've taken off for a bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just good to do that. Good for the marriage. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, and that's good, and uh, really appreciate <clears throat> Pastor Paul and Debbie uh, to uh, allow me the privilege of, of coming and, and teaching, uh, preaching. Whatever, we'll see what happens tonight. I'm thinking teaching, but you never know. Um. But I want to talk to you about a very sensitive subject tonight. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about your weight. I do. See, I told you it's sensitive. But you know what's good? You should be sensitive. We should all be sensitive about our weight. Um, <laughs> let me qualify that. So I'm not really talking about our physical weight. Everybody's going, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> On the way over, I stopped at McDonald's. I wish I hadn't. I had a uh, Angus burger. Uh, and I took a bite out of it, and it was raw. I know. Ooh, it's gross. I know. Brought it back. Wasn't upset. Just brought it back. Hey, burger's raw. And then it just beeped. The, the staff just hovered. They're like, What? Like it was almost an impossibility. I said, well, no, look, it's, it's raw. They gave me a new one, and that's why I was a little late, because I had to wait for another Angus burger. It wasn't because of the detour. That's my confession. I repent. I wasn't really late because of the detour. I had to wait for another Angus burger. And now I'm standing up here talking to you and wishing that I just had gone after service to eat somewhere, because it just, yeah, I don't know why McDonald's is just a... The older you get, the less you like the fast food stuff anyway, right? Every <laughs> but I do want to talk about weight uh, this morning, and, uh, but I'm, or this, uh, this evening, and I'm, but I'm not talking about physical weight. I'm talking about uh, the weight that we carry. And so uh, this, this message is actually entitled, uh, uh, Carry Your Weight. <laughs> Carry your weight. And uh, what, I, what I love about the weight is, is I'm talking about the weight of the, the presence of God. I'm talking about the glory. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, when it talks about um, glory, uh, it's the word uh, kabod, which means, uh, it actually means weight. It actually has weight. And uh, tonight, hopefully, um, I want to teach you a little bit out of the book of Ephesians, mostly, um, just um, to realize what we've been given as a church. I want to encourage all of us tonight 
uh, you know, just to, to give you courage tonight that, that you're all heavy. You really are, but in a good way. And uh, tonight, we're going we're gonna to end up, hopefully, at the end of the night, just rejoicing that we're heavy. Because <laughs> we need to be. Well, we, we are. We don't just need to be, but we are. If, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, then I have good news for you. You are heavy with the presence of God. And uh, you are, I'm, I want to teach you tonight how to, uh, how to handle that weight. Sounds so funny talking about this because you think physical weight all the time, but it actually has a spiritual truth to it. And uh, there is a there there is a way, you know. There's a weight that we've been given, and there's a way that we can walk in that weight, and there's a way that we can use that weight. You know, a lot of people today they throw their weight around, don't they? And we don't like that, do we? No, no, that has a really negative kind of uh, meaning to it people throwing their weight around, and uh, that's not who we are. That's not who Jesus is. That's not what Jesus did when he walked on this earth, but Jesus knew how to carry the weight of the presence of God, didn't he? Yeah, so uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, just going to jump off, off of that. Ephesians 4, 1. The Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesian church. The Ephesian church is mentioned in Revelations, isn't it? Do you know what, what Jesus said to the Ephesian church? Do you remember? The church in Ephesus, you've lost your first love. Is that the right one? Yeah. You've lost your first love. But praise God, he wrote the book of Ephesians. <laughs> Got them all straightened out. It says uh, in the English Standard Version, it says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And, uh, you know, to understand that calling, I should probably go there myself, to understand that calling, I'm just going to read a little bit back from Ephesians 4. Sorry, I was telling everybody else to turn there and I didn't turn there. You know what else I really miss here, uh, Lisa, is um, teaching you guys Bible school. Right, Melody? Oh, my goodness. That was so much fun. Uh, in verse 8, chapter 3, verse 8 of Ephesians. So I'm just going to teach a little bit. I feel like it's teaching time. Though I am the least deserving of all God's people... Do you know, you know why the Apostle Paul said that, right? He said that in Corinthians as well. Uh, because he, uh, he always, he never forgot that he's the one who killed Christians. <laughs> and uh, he, he also realized that he was the only apostle. He felt like in the Corinthian verse, he actually says, I, I feel like I'm an apostle, like coming into it late. Because all the other ones, you know, they all saw... Christ physically. Now, he did too, but it was much later. But he says, um, uh, you know, he says that he, he's the least of all the apostles. He's the least deserving of all the apostles. But what he says after that is, he says, uh, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. So this is us He's telling us about the endless treasures, and he says he was chosen to explain ev to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. But now it's revealed to all of us, right? The very next verse says God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Now, some people think that this actually means the demonic, but it actually doesn't there. If you study, I studied this out, it actually, do, it could mean, but it doesn't actually specifically mean the demonic there. It actually means the angels in heaven and different authorities that God has established. And uh, we need to realize this, that there's a, there's a weight. When we talk about the weight of his presence, that's talking about, partially talking about authority. There's an authority that has a weight upon us and so here he's telling us that 
Even the angels in heaven, I don't have time, but I can show you other verses. Even the angels in heaven are marveling at the church, and they're marveling at us. I think it's so awesome to think the angels, these are the ones that you read about, these beings that God created, that you read about in Revelation, where it says that there's millions upon millions of angels that are praising and worshiping and singing before the throne, and they're praising God. But they're marveling at us, the church, right? And they have weight. How many know angels have a weight, <laughs> a weight of glory on them? Right? God put it on them to have influence, right? But he has put a weight of influence upon us. And the church, he's saying here, is to display that weight, to display that glory. And he goes on and he says, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Isn't that awesome? I just, uh, I, I need to give you all of this prelude in order for us to understand how to carry our weight. But I want, you to, want to show you this calling that we have. The Apostle Paul said, I want you to live a life worthy of your calling. And this is what he's talking about here. Worthy of the calling. Wow. We are a church. We are a people that can come boldly before the throne of God. Now, I want you to understand what that means. So again, if you look in Revelation you'll see a picture in Revelation chapter 5 um, where John is witnessing some things going on in heaven and he sees, you guys will probably remember this, he sees these 24 elders, right? And they have crowns. Where'd they get the crowns? Where'd they get the crowns from? It's an obvious answer. You only get the crown from, from Jesus, okay? And we're going to get crowns. We're faithful, amen? Right? You've been taught this stuff? Good? <laughs> Amen. And so here's these 24 elders. And, and, it's, and it ha he sees the picture of them bowing before the throne of God and laying down their crowns. Right? When we come boldly, we don't, we don't come with this, with this weight of his glory like a crown and go, hey, it's me, and I'm going to ask you for stuff because I'm your child. No, we come humbly before God. When, when we face the Almighty God, <laughs> we, are, we are humbled. We are in recognition of <laughs> who the heaviest one in the room is, <laughs> who the greatest presence is in the room, right? But we're worthy. We're worthy to come. That's what it says. We are made worthy to come to do this. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he goes on and he says, uh, because of, uh, so please don't lose heart because of my trials here. I am suffering for you, so you should feel honored. And when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. This is what makes you heavy. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great for, to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Therefore... I. See, that is the, all the there, therefore. You have to read that. When you read therefore, you got to go back and read what it's there for. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Hallelujah. And I read the version that says to walk in a manner worthy. English Standard Version. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have been given so much. We are the church of God. We are the followers of Christ. We're the lovers of Jesus. <laughs> we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. There has been nothing held back from us. We haven't deserved anything, and yet we've been given everything. We're not entitled to every, anything from God, but God in his grace and in his mercy said, I'm giving you everything. And so here we sit tonight, and we have everything. <laughs> and the Apostle Paul says, walk. Do you know what that word walk means besides walk? <laughs> it means to tread upon. <laughs> In fact, it means a few things. To trample, to crush with the feet. To advance by setting foot upon. And here's a complicated one. Listen carefully. To encounter successfully the greatest perils from the machinations and persecutions with which Satan would fain thwart the preaching of the gospel. In other words, <laughs> we're able to advance and propel through every attack of the enemy. Nothing that's formed against us is going to prosper. We can tread upon all of it. That's what it means. Hallelujah. This is who we are. And then finally, just to tread, up, to tread underfoot or to trample upon. It comes from uh, the same word is used in Luke 10, verse 19, where it says, in the King James Version, it says, Behold, I give you the power, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. How many know the heavier you are, the more you can crush stuff? Come on. <laughs> the heavier you are, <laughs> the more you can crush stuff. Right? You were like popping those uh, bubble wrap things. <laughs> you have more weight than that. <laughs> you ever like stepping on a pop can? I do. Crush the pop can. Right? You have more weight than that. <laughs> the weight that we have is so heavy, it has the authority to crush every work of the enemy. That's the kind of weight that you carry. Aren't you encouraged? Don't you have courage tonight to be able to walk like that? That's what the Apostle Paul meant. Now let's go back, because we're teaching here, Sunday school. In Ephesians 4.1, it says, Therefore... I want you to, or I beg you to walk, to walk, to tread upon. That's what he's saying. He's not just saying, just, just go for a walk. He's saying to walk, to tread upon, to crush every attack of the enemy, to, to, to step over. And not only that, but to uh, remember how God told Abraham that every place that he set his foot, and he told Joshua that too, he said, that's, that's yours. I'm giving that to you. That, that is, see, the way that you walk is the way that you fight. So Abraham, if you, if you remember the story, when God gave Abraham the vision, Abraham had to walk it out. He didn't just sit in a tent and go, whoopee, I got a vision and all this land. He's giving me all this land. What land? Well, you got to walk it. You got you to walk it to understand it. It's not just a matter of, of saying it, but it's a matter of walking it out. And so Abraham, the Old Testament is a, a physical picture of spiritual truths. Amen. Of this side of the cross. And uh, Abraham walked, you, you read it, he walked everywhere and just about everywhere he went, I think I preached that once here, he built altars and worshipped God and thanked God for every place that he tread upon. And he had authority and he, what happened when he did that? He carried weight. I'm teaching you a principle here. He, ga he began to gain weight. <laughs> he got fat in the presence of God. Right? How do I know that? Because he gathered allies, didn't he? 
Why? Even though they were, they were not his people, he gathered allies. Remember the ones that he gathered together when Lot got in trouble and he gathered a bunch of his allies and said, we need to fight? And what happened? They said, yeah, let's go. Why? Because Abraham had weight. He didn't push it around in a negative way, but when it came time to apply the weight, let me say it again. Are you hearing this? Okay, now I'm being prophetic. Stop it. Teach. And when it came time to apply the weight, when is it time to apply our weight? When the enemy comes and tries to attack. When the enemy, when you know that the enemy is trying to stand in your way to witnessing to somebody, to, uh, to standing up uh, for, for a certain right of the kingdom of God and speaking that out loud, that's the time when it's time to walk, when it's time to tread upon, when it is time to apply your weight. Jesus knew when it was time to apply the weight in this in this context, for example, when he came and he saw the money changers in the temple, right? Outside the temple. And what did he do? Right? The next day he comes back. He had made a whip and he flips over all the money changers' tables and he gets them all out of here and he says that my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Right? He knew how to apply his weight. Later on, he was questioned. Right? Well, what gives you the right to push your weight around? They said, who gives you the right? Who gives you the authority? Right? And what did he say? Wasn't that where he said, well, I'll answer that if you answer this. And he asked him about John the Baptist. And basically he's saying, so you don't think I can do this with the weight of presence of God. Who do you think gave John the right? Start baptizing people. Where did he come from, you know? <laughs> well, they wouldn't answer. He said, well, I'm not answering either. We got to know. And you can't be afraid. But this is the beauty of the weight. I love this, about applying the weight. You will know when you need to apply the weight. It's kind of like a jar that's been in the fridge for a while, and uh, it's kind of stuck. You know, the jam jar, <laughs> right? And you turn it, and nothing happens. You know, automatically you know, don't you? Just using a simple example, but automatically you know, you, it requires greater weight. It requires greater pressure to get that thing undone because you want the goodness that's on the inside. And you'll know. You'll know because what the weight of God's presence, I love this about the weight. We could just go on all night. I won't, don't worry. But I've been on this for probably about three weeks now, four weeks. But, but the, more, the more that you learn to apply the weight, the more you see how you can operate in your weight, the greater the goodness of God is revealed to you you'll see such a goodness of God. And the, and the weight isn't, you know, when Jesus flipped over the, the tables, he wasn't trying to scare people away. That was something that rose up in him, right? For righteousness' sake. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So that's a picture of conviction. Because these people were ignorant and they had turned things around. And he said, this is not right. And this is my response to it. This is my behavior to it. The world will see. See, the world doesn't understand when Christians begin to stand up against abortion or against same-sex marriage or, or against uh, legalizing marriage. The world doesn't understand that. But that is, you don't have to be ashamed of it. That's, that's simply just your weight being applied. That's all. It's just the weight of the presence of God being applied. See how practical the presence of God can be. See, we can, we can worship like this, and we can, we can glory in the Lord and, and, and uh, just exalt him and everything else. But what that does, when we, when we begin to walk, it's, it's given us the exercise, it's given us the strength to be able to tread. Right? 
See, the world doesn't understand this, you guys. They don't. The world listens to the radio. They listen to the news, you know, the, the ones that aren't in church. And, and this is what gives them a perverted kind of weight. They feel like there's this, you know, they've got something to say. They've got something to stand up for. And it's completely the opposite spirit, isn't it? Right? Because the Bible does talk about another kind of weight, a weight that easily besets us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and the weight of sin, right? <laughs> anyway, kind of veering off here. So walk, walk means to, to trample, to crush, and uh, it's, it's the Greek word um, paring potatoes. Peri pateo, P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O, paring potatoes. It's an easy way to remember it. <laughs> So we need to learn how to pare potatoes. <laughs> Perry is means for this reason or, or because of, and patea means to trample. This is so for this reason we walk. For this reason we walk. Sometimes it's good to understand some of the Greek words. You got to understand the reason that you're walking. Now, the word. Um, so in Luke ten nineteen, he uses that same word power to tread on serpents and that word power is not the dunamis power that we often hear about the miracle working power but it's actually exousia power exousia power is authority right i love this because it goes together the walking and the power we need the power to walk this is we're talking about weight and when we walk when we walk there is, how many know, there's a, there's a, we have a weight on us and behind us and in front of us. We got the presence of God. We got the glory of the Lord on us. All right? He's got our back. That's what I'm trying to say. When you walk, church, just remember you're not walking alone. We never walk alone. <laughs> we got a heavy <laughs> We got a heavy. You know what I'm saying? And he's walking with us. <laughs> right? That's what Ephesians 3.20 means. That's what he said. That we can do far more than we could ever think or imagine through his power that's working in us. Hallelujah. And so the power of the exousia means this. And so this is your power to tread. Okay, you have a power of choice. That's a power that comes from the heavenlies. The power to choose the right thing, you guys. We need this kind of weight. Don't we need this kind of weight? I know this doesn't sound like, oh, where's the miracle? This is a miracle. See, before it says, before we knew Christ, we were slaves to sin. I don't know about you, but I know what that means. That means I thought I had a choice. But I really didn't have a choice. <laughs> Pretty much just following my sin nature until that nature changed by me receiving Christ into my heart. Colossians says that I would put on the nature of Jesus, that I could become like him and make the right choices. That's an exousia power, the power to choose. And I can walk in that choice. Isn't that awesome? We sang it. The freedom, to be in freedom. Every choice, every exousia choice, every power choice that we make for freedom gives us a heavier weight, increases the weight of the glory of God so that we're not just crushing bubble wrap or pop cans, but we're crushing the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that if, if you, if you make the wrong choices as a Christian, you just don't seem to have that weight that you need to tread, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> no, we don't, Pastor Harry. <laughs> but you do, because you're making the right choices. And praise God, the best choice that you made was a choice that you didn't even make. 
So we've got to understand, I'm going to talk about worthy in a minute. I'm saving the best for last. John 17, Jesus says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you to bear fruit. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Now, you had to make the choice to accept his choosing. <laughs> kind of like on a baseball, uh, you know, some pickup baseball game. And you got 20 kids. You pick out two captains. Maybe you don't like the one captain, and he picks you. You've, you've all been there, right? As little kids, it's like, well, you don't really like, you don't like those ones he's picked. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to. But he chose you. <laughs> he chose you, but you still got to choose to say, oh, okay, I'm coming on your side. And Jesus is like, good, good choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it means this. It even means a physical and a mental power. Whoo, man. There are so many mental issues today. So many physical issues today. Man, we need the weight of God's presence, of God's glory upon us to strengthen us, right? Even Paul tells Timothy, you know, bodily exercise is okay. It's all right. But how much better is that spiritual exercise, right? And we have that power. We have that ability that God puts that weight of his presence on us, and it renews our strength, right? Number three definition of exousia, the power of authority, influence, and of right, privilege. So it's the power of influence and privilege. That's a good weight. Influence and privilege. How many know Jeff Be Bezos? Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Isn't that the Amazon guy? You don't know the Amazon guy? He is one of the richest men, if not the richest man in the world today. He's got some influence. And he's got some privilege. He's got nothing on us. You know, because pretty sure he's not saved. Just bought a house, one of the most expensive houses ever purchased for a hundred and... $65 million or something. I don't know, something like that. But he just, he makes ridiculous amounts of money every minute. <laughs> Saying that to say this, we have so much more power and influence. You know, in Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And later on, it says that, that kings will come. Kings will come to you, right? The Apostle Paul as a prisoner, was brought before kings and rulers. I'm able to witness to that power and influence because there was a weight that was put upon him. And then the power of rule or a government. How many know that, you know, when you have, when you carry, I want you to know this as a church, when you carry the weight of God and you know how to carry it, there is a wisdom that comes out of the weight. There's a wisdom to rule, to administer, to govern. Did you know that? Do you know why I'm saying that? Because one day, there will be this thousand-year rule and reign of Jesus Christ with his church. That's you and me. And there's an exousia power that's been placed upon us. There's a, there's a weight of glory that's put upon us that will give us the ability to rule and to reign, to govern with Christ. Now, we have a taste of that today. You have the ability. Listen, don't sell yourself short, church. I'm encouraging you and giving courage today that, that you have a better way. The, the way of the world to rule and to govern is not the way of the kingdom. And there is a, a power that's upon us, a weight that's upon us. If we know how to use that weight, that we will be able to rule and to govern and to reign on this earth, even now, even before Christ's come. coming. I can see this uh, even in our council meetings when, you know, here's, here's the thing is, uh, I love how we as a church, how we can just uh, let people govern, 
for a while and just let them kind of mess things up. But we're praying. We're walking. We're learning how to tread. And we're in here and we're worshiping and we're learning and we're growing in the wisdom of God. Amen. And uh, we're learning how to carry that weight. And then when things kind of all fall apart, you know, I'm telling you, rulers and authorities will begin to look at you. This is that Ephesians scripture again. They'll begin to look at you as the church. And they'll say, well, how do you guys do it? I'm glad you asked. Right? I'm glad you asked. I I'm seeing this now in council. We've been praying for years now for council that they would recognize the wisdom that's upon the church to rule and to govern. And now they're beginning to ask, you know. A couple of years ago, they were making a vision. And they asked us for input. They asked the church for, vi for input into the vision. How awesome is that, right? And because we were learning how to carry the weight of God's glory, the weight of God's presence, we were able to weigh in. See, that's what you can do. You can weigh in. But you don't weigh in in your own wisdom. No, because we're all fools. That's what Christ wanted. God wanted to use the foolish things of this earth to confound the wise. Don't ever forget, you're a fool for Jesus. You're a fool for Jesus. All the wisdom that you need and have is from the kingdom. <laughs> He's just laid it upon you like a weight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's get to the, good, the, to the, to the best part of this. So we learn how to walk. We learn how to walk in that power, how to tread. We're learning that we have this weight. It's the presence of God or the glory of God. You know, in the Old Testament, I don't have time to turn there, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, right through to, ver to chapter 7, you see Solomon has built the temple and he's dedicating it. And the priests, you know this story, the priests are in there and they're doing their priest stuff. And uh, the cloud, it says a cloud descended from the heavens, a dark cloud. And uh, it was the presence of God. And it had weight. It, it had a weight. The glory cloud had, it, it, there was a heaviness, and it was so heavy that, uh, you know this, that the priests couldn't stay and do their priest stuff in the tent. They had to get out. They had to get out. Now, that's old covenant. See, now we can stand in the glory of God. Huh. But you might still fall down. How many have ever been slain in the Holy Spirit? That's, that's just simply a, a, a very simple way to, to illustrate to you. That's the, the weight of God's glory that you're feeling. That's why people fall down. It's heavy. It's heavy, but in a good way. Praise God. It's like, yeah, <laughs> knock me over with that. It's awesome, <laughs> right? Where back then, it, it's, it, you got to see the picture, and I encourage you to read it. That'll be your homework, but all the thousands of animals that he sacrificed, but it wasn't enough to keep the priests in the temple. Think about this. It wasn't enough to keep the priests in the temple. It wasn't it. It, it just, it fell short. <laughs> but who doesn't? Jesus. Jesus, the worthy one. Jesus, who in Revelation chapter 5, again, there's a scroll that John sees, and there's an angel saying, who's worthy to open this scroll? And it went quiet, and John starts weeping. And the angel says, why, you know, stop weeping. Oh, there's nobody to, worthy to open the scroll. But then you see a picture. He sees the lamb that was slain. And then he sees the lion. <laughs> he says, and Jesus is the one that's worthy. Worthy of what? Jesus is the only one in heaven that's worthy to open the scroll that releases judgment upon this earth. Whew. Right? That's heavy. Say, that's heavy. <laughs> you better believe that's heavy right? <laughs> but here's, here's what worthy means. So he says, Paul says he wants you to walk worthy of your calling. So here's what worthy means. It's the word axios. It means weighing, having weight, and here's the best part, having the weight of another thing of like value worth as much. Having the weight of another thing of like value worth as much. 
Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'll show you this very quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says we have been reconciled with God through Christ. Reconciled. That means we were down here, we were worms without God. There, there is nothing in us that was worthy. Okay? Romans 3, 23, all sinned and came short of the glory of God. Amen? All right? But because of Jesus, he reconciled us. In other words, he brought us up, not being as God, but re being on the same level of where God is, heavenly high places, right? Because of Christ. Ephesians, again, Paul teaches, and he says, man, he's brought you up to a place where he's seated you in heavenly high places with Christ Jesus, who is seated next to the Father, right? <laughs> How many know we carry a lot of weight? We do. That's what worthy is. So when Paul says to be worthy, there's, there's, there's nothing that, there's no way that we can do anything, behave in any manner outside of Christ that is going to give us the authority, the proper authority to walk, to tread upon, to have exousia power, authority, and have any kind of effect. Right? But Paul says, if Paul said it, that means it's possible, right? If, Paul, if Paul's asking us to do it, then it means it's possible. Well, it's only possible through Christ. And here's the question. <laughs> Are you worth it? See, in Philippians chapter 2, uh, basically, it says this. It says that Jesus came as a man, and it says, and he did not uh, take equality with God as something to grab a hold of. Did you get that? So he left. Oh, he left that place of all worthiness, and he became as a man, equal with you and I. You got to see this. He took on our weight, the weight of sin, so that he could bring us back to a place with the Father. He had to do it because we couldn't. See, with the weight that we carried, there was no way that we could do what Jesus had to do. But Jesus was the worthy one, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. This was God's plan all along. And so Jesus took on the weight of man, didn't he? He, he bore our sicknesses, didn't he? The weight. He bore our diseases. He bore our sin. He took it all upon himself. And he took it to the cross. And he died so that if we would believe in him, that he would make us worthy. So that we could walk in that weight. And he demonstrated the weight of God's glory, didn't he? Everywhere that he went. And I love this. I'm running out of time. But I love this. You know, if I, if I, if I could only tell you one more story, I would tell you this out of Luke 19. You cannot, as a church, listen church, you can't look at yourself and say, I'm not worth it. Because if you say that, you can't walk worthy of the calling that's on your life. You are worth it. And he has made you worthy. It's not you. It's kind of a paradox. It's like you're nothing, but you're everything. Jesus said, you can't do anything without me. That doesn't mean that you can't do absolutely anything. You can do lots of stuff without Christ. What he's talking about is you can't do anything that's fruitful in the kingdom with me. That's what it means. Don't get all weird and crazy and flaky. Of course you can. People do stuff all the time. But it's not fruitful in the kingdom. So, but he says, but with me you can produce much fruit. Right? And so Jesus, he's walking along through Jericho. And there's this wee little guy named Zacchaeus. And I'm telling you, people looked at Zacchaeus 
You know the story well enough that I'm just going to tell it to you this way. People looked at Zacchaeus and said, you're not worth it. You're not worth it. You're not worth nothing. You're not even worth, worth it to see Jesus. Block him out, boys. Don't let him through. And he's trying to press in. He's trying to press in. Not because he feels like he's, he's worthy to see Jesus, but he just wants to see. But he gets an idea and he runs ahead and he climbs a tree and he gets on that tree and Jesus walks by. And this is how worth it you are to God. Jesus calls him by name. Now you can downplay it and say, well, he was infamous. He was a notorious sinner and tax collector and infamous, but I, I don't think Jesus knew him before that. I think he just knew his name because you're worth it. He knows your name. He knows more than your name. He knows who you are. And he knows all of your behavior. And it doesn't matter because he says you're worth it. And I've made you worthy. I've made you worthy. Now live in this calling. And of course, we know the rest of the story. Because Jesus didn't treat Zacchaeus like the rest of the people did. Jesus treated him with worth. And that's how we carry our weight, church. You may feel like there's people around you you just cannot stand. I know some like that. But you've got to look at the, through the eyes of Jesus. Isn't that what you just said holiness is earlier? To, to see as God sees and to agree? Right? To look at that person that everybody else hates and make them feel chosen. Because we just learned. You didn't choose him, he chose you. How did you feel chosen? You heard God calling in some way, didn't you? You heard his voice. Man, come. Come on, I want to have dinner with you. Come on. Come on, I want to go have a cup of coffee with you. You're worth it. Why? You're worth it. The world puts worth on us according to our weight, in a sense, but in the wrong way. They say things like, man, you're worth your weight in gold. But you know what they mean by that, don't you? Well, you're very useful. I can use you. You're worth your weight in gold. I can really use that talent. Come on, just do That's not how Jesus looks at your worth. The only way he looks at your worth is because he is worthy. And his, he looks in the eyes of love, the Father's love. And he says, God has made you worthy through me. You read it in Romans chapter 3, the rest of that chapter. He has made you righteous. He's made you. He has given you the weight of his glory to walk in the power, the exousia power, the authority, so that you can tread upon every work of the enemy. And you can have influence because you have privilege. Because you're worth it. You're all worth it. The church is worth it. Jesus loves the church and gave his life for her. We're worth it. Never think that you're not worth it. Because you are. Hallelujah. There's so much that we can do. And in closing, I want to say this. I feel, at this point, I know... <laughs> that each individual here, we have weight, the weight of his glory upon us, the weight of his presence. Praise God. That's good. Now, Jesus, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul talks about the body of Christ. And he says each part of the body is important for the other and that we have to operate as a body. And I believe this, is that, is that when we put all of our weight together, the push of the church will be so great and so effective. When we get this, you guys, and we're getting it, we're close, we're getting it. When we walk in unity, now, here, here's one key, there's many keys, but here's one main key for this, how to walk in that corporate weight. He says it again in Ephesians chapter 5, he says, submit one to another. 
It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. If you're going to experience the weight of somebody else's, of, of the glory on someone else, remember, it's the same glory. It's one. <laughs> Unity is one. How do you be one? What was worthiness? The weight of one thing equaling the weight of another thing. We're all worthy. We're all of equal weight. There's no one overweight. There's no one underweight. We're all the right weight, 1 Corinthians 12 says. We're all the right parts. And if you come together, there's this heaviness of the glory of God that pushes against the flesh. Right? And allows people, when the flesh is pushed away, right? I'm talking about evangelism, discipleship. When the flesh is pushed away, people can see the Spirit. We're not called to walk in conformity. We're called to walk in transformation. Transformation requires that we operate in the weight of the glory of God together and see the church transformed from many individual parts into one part. So when God looks at us, he sees one. When the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon, he says, he, you know, he said, I'll make, you, I'll, I'll make that enemy like one person. You'll just defeat them like one. One is the key. Submission. When you submit to others' giftings, and that's why the fivefold, and there's a lot of stuff in here, but that's when you get to the fivefold in Ephesians 4. Jesus is split up into five parts because those are the gifts Christ gave, and Jesus was all five. Apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist. Jesus was all five. See? And he gives that to the body for the equipping of the saints till we all come to the unity and the maturity of our faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> maturity is knowing how to carry your weight. And I came to encourage, so I won't, I won't hang on this negative word, but we do have to understand that there is a wrong way the church can push their weight around. We're not there. We're not going to do that. We do it in love. We do it in love. See, the world knows all about bullies. Oh, bully this and bully that. <laughs> but I love driving the bus, the school bus. I drive a school bus. Because I see on there that boys are still boys. They still like to scrap. And I love it because it's real. You know, they push each other's buttons and they, you know, they do the old playful slapping around and, and then it might get a little too serious and then it's a little bit of swinging. You know, and it's not, okay, I'm not encouraging that. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is it's real. It's real. And we've got to be real. The Bible says really love each other. <laughs> really love each other. Hallelujah. See, there's so much. Carrying that weight. So be sensitive about your weight. <laughs> be aware of it. Right? We are in the physical all the time. We should be so much more in the spiritual. To be aware. Because there's a, there's a push, and there's a push coming. And you can push individually, too. But there is such a push coming, honestly. I, I, do you see it? There is such a push coming from the church. Oh, my goodness. Exousia power. Exousia power. It's coming out. It's coming out. And we're walking. We're treading. Right? And we're looking at Jesus. We're not looking at the world, but we're looking at Jesus. So that when the world comes running, we're like, we know how to take care of a virus. We know how to take care of a virus. We know what to do. But it's not running. It's not hiding. We know what to do. We know what to do with this economy. Come on. We know what to do with all these issues. Well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Did you learn some things? Walk worthy of his calling. Hallelujah. To which you were called. So, Father, thank you for the calling. Thank you, Lord, for the weight of your glory. Lord, that you're willing to put that on us. 
and to give us that ability to carry that. Lord, you've made us worthy. In other words, Lord, you have put a weight within us that can push on the weight of your glory. And I thank you, Father, for the things that are exposed in that and the things that are revealed, the hidden things, the mysteries of the kingdom. I thank you, Lord God, for the mystery of being one, that we're beginning to understand it, Lord God, as we put our weight together, Father God, that you have created a church that's heavy in the presence of God. And Lord, that's what we desire. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, church. Praise God. Walk out of here heavy. <laughs>